Hi there, DW Berman here, and this is like the third or fourth time I've done this video because uh, other problems, and then I had the video recorded, and then it was like, oh, I'm only recording it at one frame per second, so yeah, fun times. Anyway, this week's video is kind of a add-on to last week's video, which came in at the beginning of this week because I had problems with this video last week. Anyway, I was kind of going for something else, but this is what I ended up with. I just kind of have this ball that kind of rolls around. It Well, it starts off as a ball. And then it kind of flattens out right there, and then it kind of rolls up around. Then it hits the corner and deforms a little more, and uh, then comes back to the starting point and pops back up into a ball. Okay, so how did I do that? Well, pretty simple. Uh, this is a scene that has three objects, and actually four objects, but one of them you don't really see, and has no effect on the animation itself. So this ball starts off as a ball, rolls around. You might notice it's following a yellow thing. And that yellow thing is actually, well, both the ball and the yellow things are something that were added in 11.5, light wave 11.5, um, the soft body dynamics and forces. So, in w the way you add a uh, dynamics to objects in light wave now, at least with the bullet engines, you go over here to the effects tools, click on the object you want to add the uh, the property to. In this case, the ground here would be a collision object, so I go to the collision body and I select static body because it doesn't move. Then I would click on the ball, and then since it's a deforming body, I want to change it to a deforming body. And then uh, select the null and go to forces and set that to be an explosion. Now why an explosion? Explosions usually push everything out from the center. They're exploding away from the center. Well. This is a 3D program, man. You can just reverse the thing, you know? It's not like the real world where you can make an implosion out of an explosive device. Unless, you know, you set off the explosion inside a container that has a vacuum. And, you know, anyway. Um, so, basically, I was able to set the settings on this explosion force so that everything is being sucked towards the center of that explosion. But the only thing that's moving and being affected by it is the ball. So that is why the ball is following around on this. And if I come over here to my bullet tab and I just go to world properties, you can see all the properties for my tab. So let me also hit uh, F3 to change my viewport so you can kind of see things. So if I zoom in on the explosion here, uh, well, first of all, let me set my end frame to 150 so we don't have to wait for the entire uh, don't have to recalculate the entire thing just to play it. So, there we go. We see this little dot here with this line coming off it. You see them all over here. And they're all, the lines are all pointed towards the center. That is telling me the direction the force is going. It does not indicate the strength of the force like it does with the a wind object in the old dynamic system in Lightwave, but it is uh, telling you the direction of the force. So if I come over here to my explosion, and I set my item strength from negative 60 to a positive 1. You'll see that now the uh, little force lines are pointing in the opposite direction. And why did I pick 60? Well, through trial and error, I found that uh, that's the strength I needed to get the ball moving fast enough to follow it around without falling too far behind or overshooting it or anything. So the other property on this is that it's the center, but that's kind of the default anyway for the explosion. So uh, static, I did play with the friction and bounciness a bit on the uh, on the static object, on the ground object, and I also changed the collision margin a little bit, but I don't know that it really helped much. Most of the action takes place on this deforming object. You'll notice that uh, it does kind of flatten out at one point like right about there. You'll see that I have a blue highlight on my E button here on this shape retention thing. And what that is doing is that means there's an envelope on it or a curve. And this is animated. So it starts off at 100% shape retention so that it's trying to keep its shape completely. And then at zero, it flattens out to zero. So, um... I don't know why it doesn't completely flatten out. Well, I, actually, I do. But um, 
yeah, so that is why it flattens out there. And if I scroll over here, you can see it also pumps back up at the end. So you could probably use this to animate uh, something inflating, like a bouncy castle or something. I don't know if it quite worked that well or not, but whatever. Uh, you also want to change your linear stiffness and angular stiffness. You might want to lower those. Uh, also, the volume scaling plays a, an effect here. It's not a very complicated scene, so it doesn't take too long to simulate, but it does take some time, so that's just kind of the nature of the thing. So there we go. The, the problem with having the volume conservation or the shape scaling, volume scaling down, is sometimes, you know, it gets a little too crazy, you know? <laughs> it uh, will intersect with itself and flip over and do all kinds of weird things. So you definitely need to just kind of tweak these settings to get them exactly what you want them to be like. Okay, so there are some things I learned through this process and the, the project that kind of preceded this. Um, one is that, well, originally I, I was doing something where I was trying to make a water drop move along a surface, and I found that, of course, uh, getting the bullet dynamics to work properly at that scale was not working very well, so I had to scale up the entire scene. So that's why, you know, you might notice the scale on the scene is, well, you can't really tell, but it's a good size scene. It's, you know, normal, whatever, one meter, two meter kind of a range on things. Um, also, with the uh, object that is deforming, the deforming body, if you are using uh, subdivisions, you need to set the subdivision to after displacement or later. If you set it before after displacement, it just doesn't move. You can see the bounding box grows where it would be going, but, you know, it just, the ball itself, the geometry itself, just doesn't move with it. So you need to set the subdivision to later and then it will actually show up. Uh, also, if you... In order to, to fix the ball in place, or to, to fix clothing on a character, you usually set up a weight map or something where you want the clothes to not move, and then you come over here to the mesh filter and you set that. But what I found with this is if I have this ball starting a little too low, so it's actually intersecting the collision object. It'll get stuck in place, so you don't, if you want to, uh, that might be another way to stick your collision deforming object on something, or it could explain why it's not deforming where you think it should. So there we go, the, it's like a balloon stuck onto a pole without a string. It just kind of gets pulled along towards that other thing. So that might be useful for you <laughs> in your projects. It wasn't particularly in this one. Um, initially, I wanted to make this like uh, the Marble Madness video game from the 80s. Some of you might be a little young to know what I'm talking about, but there is a game called Marble Madness where you had to control a marble along a maze with other traps and stuff. Um, I tried doing that with this, but it wasn't working, so I'll show you part of what happened. Uh, let me just skip to the end. Do I still have that? In? Nope, I still have it on deforming body somehow. Hmm. What I wanted to do was change it to a rigid body. Go to the end. There we go. That renders or simulates much faster. But you'll notice that, of course, I have uh, friction really low on the ground. But you'll notice that it, it's bouncing around the center of the object, or around the force, the explosion force. Uh, so that wasn't very helpful. Also, it would kind of get stuck up here on this little ramp area here, and then kind of speed along really quickly to to catch up with this and then we shoot way off the end and then you know it just wasn't I wasn't able to get the balance right to get it to look like it was uh, a marble rolling on the surface so I don't know what the, the takeaway from that is <laughs> um, 
also when I was rendering this, I rendered it on two computers with a render controller, each thing rendering like five frames or whatever. I found that at the end where it gets to this corner here and things get doubled up and stuff, uh, I was actually getting different shapes on the different render nodes. So I ended up having to render the last part of this animation on one computer. And I don't know why that was. Uh, you might need to just, might want to just bake it out to an MDD file before rendering it on a network or sending it to a render farm. And uh, one, there are several ways to do that. Uh, one way is to just go over to the, the IO tab and just do MD multi baker and save it out and then uh, use MD multi loader to bring it back in and attach it to your geometry and then you can just kill off the bullet dynamics because it's not using the bullet dynamics anymore. So uh, hopefully this video has been interesting to you and helpful to you to just kind of open your eyes to what you can see. I also found recently that if you put a morph on your object and you animate that morph really quickly, that morph will actually tell your deforming object to, uh, to bounce a bit. So there's some pretty cool stuff with, that are possible with this. Uh, we'd still like to see some you know, other constraints and joints and stuff, but... Uh, this, you can get, get some pretty interesting stuff with what we have now, and it's fun to play with. So that is my little spiel on bullet dynamics, particularly deforming bodies and forces. Didn't go in depth into any of them, but hopefully, you know, whatever. Also, uh, subscribe to this channel so you can see when I post new videos. I'm trying to get a new video up every week, either uh, an experiment or some graphics-related video or lightwave tutorial, mini-tutorial. Uh, I don't know if I'll do that in the next couple of weeks because it looks like my work schedule is picking up. But uh, if you subscribe, you'll know when I get new videos posted on YouTube. Also, uh, take a look at my videos I have at liberty3d.com. Liberty3d.com. The link is in the description. I have tutorials there for Lightwave, and there are tutorials from other artists for Lightwave and other applications. So check that out for sure. And thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day.